I think about it this way. There's a few groups of states that are going to decide the election. The first are this trio in the Rust Belt. These are states that voted for Obama twice and then flipped to Donald Trump, and no one expected it. They're called blue wall states. Democrats thought they'd win them. And that is Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. Biden or Trump are going to have to win some combination of them to win the presidency. We choose hope over fear, unity over division, science over fiction, and truth over lies. If we win Pennsylvania, we win the whole thing. You gotta get out there. Big deal, right? If you start to do poorly in one, you might probably do poorly in the others because the populations are, are similar. Pennsylvania is unique because it has two big urban centers where you've got a diverse, you know, a big black population, other constituencies that tend to trend democratic. But some of these other states are very white, older population, which does tend to vote more Republican. So Biden's really been focusing on these states. He doesn't want to sort of repeat the mistakes of 2016. He's been to Wisconsin. That was one of the big retrospective. Hillary Clinton never went to Wisconsin in 2016. States Trump only won by a fraction of a point in 2016. Those three alone would put Biden over 270. But right now, one sort of X factor in all of this is the coronavirus. And we're seeing cases really, really rise in Wisconsin, particularly during the primary we saw people in Wisconsin voting in hazmat suits. So now that this is again a hot spot, we don't know how that will affect voting. Um, and there's been plenty of legal challenges around early voting there. And so there's just so many outstanding questions about what the actual vote will look like in that state. We have so many things going on that the problems that we had 2016, people just probably feel like it didn't make a difference. But now, <laughs> Literally, our life depends on it. Then you go to another state that stands alone. That's Florida. Florida is sort of its own beast. It's just a very unique state and so critical to the election. If Donald Trump doesn't win Florida, it's pretty much game over for him. You think Trump's going to win here? Is that a serious question? We're never going to lock down again. We locked down. We understood the disease. And now we're open for business. And that's what it is. It's unique because it has a really big Hispanic population, but unlike in other states, this Hispanic population is fairly divided between Democrats and Republicans. There's a very strong uh, Cuban-American conservative community there, and they tend to support Donald Trump. They like his policies towards South America, and there's also an increasingly big population of Venezuelans who do sort of appreciate Trump's position towards the leadership there. Similarly, though, there's a growing population of Puerto Ricans who remember that Donald Trump came to the island after Hurricane Maria and he tossed paper towels and didn't seem to even know that possibly Puerto Ricans are American. And so, you know, there's a strong disdain for the president in this community. Whether they've registered to vote and will turn out in Florida is the big question. So that's sort of the head to head battle. It is the margins there in all polling are razor thin. That's one where I don't think anyone knows how it's going to land on election day. So the other way I think about the rest of the states, there's like the future swing states and the past swing states. So the future swing states are states like Arizona, Georgia, maybe one day Texas, where the demographics seem to favor Democrats, but right now these are traditionally Republican states. And Joe Biden's polling really well in a lot of these states. So we've seen him go to Arizona where there's a competitive Senate race. He's been there a few times and he's leading in all the polls. Georgia's gonna be a lot closer. Texas seems a little bit like a white whale, but polls show it close. Then there's these sort of past swing states that are suddenly in play just because of the dynamics of this race. So that's like Ohio. For decades, Ohio has predicted the presidency, but it's become increasingly a Republican state. It kind of looks like those three states we talked about earlier, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, it's older and whiter. And it does, at sort of all levels, tend to trend towards the Republicans, but suddenly it's very competitive. Biden has gone there. He's fighting neck and neck with Trump there. He turned his back on you. I promise you, I will never do that. There's another state that's really closely fought 
North Carolina. And, and that's one that we've seen go back and forth. It's another Southern state, but it does have a Democratic governor now. There's also a lot of suburban voters who are walking away from the Republican Party. So it's a really good opportunity for Democrats to make gains in the state, but it's also traditionally Republican and Trump did win it in 2016. You had a president who apologized for America. Now you have a president who is standing up for America and standing up for the great people of North Carolina. We'll be watching all of these swing states on election night, but there's always the chance, especially this year, of a state going a way we didn't expect it to, possibly tipping the balance for Biden or Trump. But you know, there's also a possibility that we won't know on election day who the next president of the United States is. It might take days, it might take weeks to decide because we're expecting a lot of legal challenges, this new voting system. So there's all these different variables that could take a while to tabulate. And I think that's why, depending on the margins, if this is an incredibly competitive race, it's likely to take some time.